Are you feeling tired of being let down by traditional doctors uh, in the US or, or the UK? Are you tired of being gaslit and told that you don't have problems? So today I'm here with Dr. Elliot Dinetz, MD here in Miami, and he works on precision medicine, functional medicine. These are some new terms, but exciting ways to practice medicine that gets to the root cause of the problem. So we're happy to have Elliot here today. Thanks for, uh, for being with us. And, My pleasure. Uh, we we'll want to learn all about uh, what you do, functional medicine and your approach, in particular with TRT, but other areas of, of hormones and health, and just a little bit of what you do. So firstly, I'd like to ask you, how would you define what you do? You call it precision medicine, functional medicine. What, what is the, the difference between that and, and how would you define it? Here in the States, at the very least, this gr ever-growing field, as you mentioned, precision medicine is really customized and tailored to the individual rather than a one-size-fits-all approach to disease management, which we all are very familiar with. Right. Prevention is completely absent, and the restorative capabilities are so novel that the establishment has not had a chance to catch up. And this uh, has been a long time in the making, uh, of course, otherwise you know, known as functional medicine. We go at the root cause of not only risk factors and issues at hand, but how to optimize the patient's body, mind-body even, for optimal health and longevity. So what do your colleagues, your more traditional colleagues, think of, of the type of medicine that you practice? So that's been an evolution. Uh, okay. Initially, you'll have the outliers of psychiatric medicine, for example, heavily dependent on pharmaceuticals for managing disease, saying this is still too novel, I, I'm not familiar with it. These are years ago. Now, you have actually additionally trained psychiatrists in the integrative and functional realm who are doing this, using metabolomics and uh, supplementation, hormonal optimization for mood disorders. So it's a nice wave to see the, the, the change that's now accepted, and it is in universities already. Oh, that's great. So you have an affiliation with the university in Florida. What's... University of Miami, yes. Okay the integrative medicine department. So it's the only one that's private, uh, unhindered by the establishment to really practice the medicine of the future, which I call the medicine That's, that's now. good because, you know, we, in, in medicine, it's very traditional and people like to you know, watch their turf and, and want to make sure that you're not infringing on, on, on their practice or you know, mm. doing something that, that goes against the standard of care, I think they call it. I guess it's becoming more accepted now. So you know, that's not really an issue at this point. Correct. Plus, uh, as mentioned, unhindered, right? This specialty is a more advanced approach. We don't really step on anyone else's toes, although there are, albeit, there could be some professional envy in the fact that they aren't trained in that's, this. Yeah. Where again, is man, like if we're dealing with hormonal optimization or functional endocrinology, that's not a specialty of endocrinology. This is really age management and longevity we're dealing with. Well, we're not really sure what endocrinology traditionally does, are we? I mean, <laughs> well, we know what they <laughs> what they think they do. <laughs> it's usually, uh, let's just keep looking and charting out those pathways and we'll, we'll tell you in six months what, what we think, right? That's traditionally what they've... <laughs> you know, a big thing that I see with endocrinologists is, is, yeah. is the uncontrolled diabetes and thyroid. And it's kind of an insult to their profession, I think, because the primary care should be managing that better with lifestyle and other mechanisms that we're talking about. But since that's all been neglected, putting someone together from ground and understanding the impl implementation of what we do, which is lifestyle, hormone optimization, the gut microbiome, is really the key to looking at you know, how to optimize health. I mean, that's, that's so important, the, the gut health. I mean, so much comes into play. I think I've been seeing some studies about you know, maybe you should use mouthwash because of the part of the microbiome that starts in the mouth may affect your erectile function. Is that some of the the work that you've seen or done? Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly is a fact in the sense that you're destroying all these microflora that are important for digestion of food. We know that and the breakdown of them and the absorption. We now have studies that show the absorption of for nutrients and essential nutrients in the gut are related to the microbiome. You're destroying that in the process, right? You're also eating too quickly. Not digesting that food properly is an, over, is an overwhelming state in the gut and allowing overgrowth of organisms and not killing them properly, hence hurting the intestines. And that's called intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Mm, as it's that's referred. right. So, and these cause all a myriad of health conditions. So should we not use mouthwash then? <laughs> <laughs> you can use mouthwash that aren't so you know, strong and antimicrobial. I see. That's what I would think. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, chlorhexidine is probably in lots of the mouthwashes in, in the UK quite a bit. I'm not sure about in the US. Here as well. And okay. if you're dealing with an abscess in the mouth, right? We don't want to, dis we want to yeah. distinguish what is good, what is bad, right? Again, personalized care. 
oh, this, this doctor wants to say that chlorhexidine is bad. That's yeah. cor incorrect if you use it in the rare or specific instances where it's used. But a panaceum for using something of that nature is terrible for the oral microbiome. It is. And the data is there to support it. Okay. So we're going to watch that. Tell me about what you do with Hashimoto's treatment. That's something I saw on your website. What's your approach? So we always look, right? Because there is a root yeah. cause for everything, no matter what the disease is. And if we can stop that progression and even reverse it, that's the climactic goal, right? So in Hashimoto's, we see a myriad of different presentations, right? We have uh, patients who are completely asymptomatic. We have, you know, who are healthy. We have patients who are very symptomatic. When you take it as a whole, again, you're looking at the microbiome, there are bacterial organisms, okay, including you know, Klebsiella species, for example, that are known autoimmune triggers, so nutritionally related. And this explains why we've had holistic health coaches as patients who've cured their own rheumatoid arthritis. You know, so, yeah. we, we actually end up seeing that in their gut microbiome, these organisms are still present, and oftentimes they've been able to eradicate it on their own. And that fixes the Hashimoto's and... Potentially you know, is one cause. One cause. That's one cause. Okay. Others are the hormonal imbalances that people experience towards menopause. They lose testosterone and estrogen that are important because they have receptors on virtually everywhere in the body, including the immune system. So you lose that cell protection, if you will, and autoimmunity can, can ensue as a result from hormonal imbalances plus these environmental triggers. So when you optimize that, we've had plenty of examples of testosterone deficient physicians even in my mm. practice who had their uh, autoimmune conditions perfectly under control and stopped from progressing when their testosterone was optimized which has that autoimmune protective effect well, that's really good so thank you where can people uh, find you or contact you what's your website sure they can uh, easily find us at drdenetz.com my the spelling of my name d-i-n-e-t-z and um, it's Plenty of information on there as well, free for people to review. And this grows into the UK. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I think we'll, we'll watch the space. We'll try to do what we can to have new offerings. So anyone watching, again, just uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you're tired of the traditional medicine, you know, there are options that we can look at and uh, you can be part of it. So please have a look at uh, Dr. Danette's uh, website and we'll see you next time.